All right. Hello and um, welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Christine Russo, who is based out of New York. And uh, hey, Christine, welcome. Hi, John. What a pleasure. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, Christine and the Retail Creative and Consulting Agency sit at the intersection of information and innovation, serving industry, the industry of retailers and retail technology. And what we wanted to talk today is about digital transformation in retail, because we hear a lot of digital, we hear a lot of talk about digital transformation. Um, a lot of people were paying lip service to it, I believe, I think, before the you know, pandemic, and then they suddenly realize, oops, we better get on board in this. So a lot of people are playing catch up. So in the retail space, uh, particularly, what are some of the what are some of the initiatives that are underway and, and where is the digital transformation going? Because I think this fascinates people because retail has changed so much over the last uh, number of years. OK, well, we, you're so right in saying that people were paying lip service and there is a lot of risk aversion in the retail industry, many industries is talking about retail. Mm -hmm risk aversion. So um, there's also, well, if I wait long enough, it'll change and some better solution will come along. So uh, when do you actually pull the trigger? And that's an interesting um, place where we are now, as it relates to your question, what's the most interest, interesting or the most important kind of thing to focus on? The thing is, we're having a ton of consolidation. Yeah. So uh, digital transformation Pre-pandemic, early pandemic was a series of pieces of, of solutions to automate, to scale, to communicate better with the customer, to promote re-engagement. Uh, and now a lot of that is consolidating, which is actually good for the retailers. It's a it's less decision making. Also, you're you're better off knowing that the technologies all function with within and of themselves. And that is primarily like digital retail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The big transformation that I like to see, or we start to see and I focus on is, okay, we sat at home, we shopped online and then like, yay, we're, everyone's going back to stores and e-commerce trend has come down a little bit. We, we've seen that in the Shopify mm -hmm. reports and, all retail reporting in the last month or so because people are going back to stores and that's great. It's not a one or the other. It's, it's an ecosystem, yeah. omni-channel. So how does a brick, so you go, you went back into a store after being locked down and loading your credit card into all of these different payment methods and you were zipping around buying stuff with mm -hmm. the greatest of ease. And then you go in a store and you're like, wait, what is this? Am I in a time capsule? <laughs> I take my wallet find my card or like you know i can't pay with venmo what yeah. is happening so if we may that digital transformation like bringing all the online things and making it available in brick and mortar is kind of there's a real urgency there yeah yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. It's interesting what you say there about the fact is, you know, how kind of behind the curve a lot of um, brick and mortar retailers, as you say, especially if you think about, you know, the younger generation, you know, that's coming through. I mean, they're they're all Venmo and this and that and Zelle or whatever it is. And in fact, I have to say, I'm living in I'm I'm in San Diego and I just noticed recently on the beach, the vendors pushing their trolleys along the beach have big signs up now except venmo except all of these different payment methods it's quite amazing and i'm thinking well hang on a second if a guy if a guy pushing a trolley on a beach can have all these payment methods why can't your local big retail store you you nailed it you nailed it uh so in my business i find solutions and bring them I, I interview them and I bring them awareness. That's what mm -hmm. I do, right? So uh, I get really passionate when I find really easy to execute, cost-effective solutions. Um, so I know that easy and cost-effective solutions for big retailers 
uh, exist to expand their digital wallets. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas I'm focused is college bookstores. So I made it, mm -hmm. I made uh, an agreement with the college uh, independent college bookstore association. Uh, if that's not a Gen Z customer, you know, what, what is, mm -hmm. and they have stores, stores that are around for over hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's like, they're really trying to survive. Well, how about you bring in Venmo? How about you bring in buy now, pay later, expand mm -hmm. your merchandise, et cetera. But you know, that's all, that's someone else's concern. My concern is you have to be in the mindset of your client. And if you're right, if a push cart trolley can do it, then certainly um, a campus store should. Yeah. And I think the, the other part of it is that, um, there's, there doesn't seem to be a lot of change in the in the customer experience in in most you know retail stores and and using, I mean I haven't seen that much uh, innovative use of technology within within stores um, recently. Do you have any? Do, are there any examples you can point to where people really are on point with this? Well, we have you know you have the early guys. So you have Nike. So you go into a Nike store. And you don't have to go to a cash wrap. And that's not new, but it's not everywhere yet. So why? Yeah. Why can't I just pay from where I'm standing? Like in Apple and in Nike. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. you, have, you have retailers still insistent on, you know, a cash register checkout station. Um, and actually back in the day, I used I was in charge of building retail stores. And I always knew every square footage and the productivity of it, sales per mm -hmm. square foot. The amount of footage you give up where you could actually produce sales. I mean, you can chalk it up to customer experience, but we're not, we're like not there anymore. So that's like a very simple technology that uh, is um, not prevalent enough. Yeah, no, uh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's the, I think that's the thing is that, you know, people got very used to the, obviously the convenience of online and all of that. And, you know, and it's, and, but as you say, I mean, there is still, and there seems to be a a little bit of a trend back towards going to stores and wanting that experience, wanting to be out among people. I know, I know from, you know, my son's like 17 and he and his friends, like, you know, he even goes up to, you know, when they have special edition things at some store, like he'll drive an hour to go there to check the stuff out. So the demand is there. It's just the, they're not meeting it in the right way. Well, there, there is technology, um, a SaaS company that is um, like the waitlist company. So they really can, it's digital. So, you know, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's an e-com thing. It's not a brick and mortar thing, but it can, it, you know, it's all tied together where you're building demand uh, for, you know, not just Supreme um, and a sneaker mm -hmm. drop um, for really popular products. And believe it or not, even the smallest stores have, really popular products. Um, mm -hmm. And yet there is no leaning into that. And technology can help. <laughs> you know, it's like, we're going to send our best customers a, an actual text, not using SMS technology, where you're building a whole ecosystem of communication. Uh, that is faster and easier. Um, it's also going to be illegal soon. So and it definitely yeah. is illegal in California. <laughs> so um, it's just... I've got too many, you know, there's a too many things on my plate type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and ab absolutely. And, um, and it's uh, behind the scenes, right? So behind the scenes, what are, what are the, what are the digital, uh, what's the digital transformation of like the whole way a store kind of operates behind the scenes? And, and are you seeing, are you seeing that, you know, people starting to focus on that, on that real efficiency and productivity piece? Yes, um, that sector. So productivity, um, me referring to uh, the human component, employees. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just make sure we're on the same page. Yes, in fact, that in, that whole sector is commoditized already. So, lots and lots and lots of options. So, what does a retailer do? First, something. Pick one. Okay, don't do mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, there's a lot of benefit to having it, and also employees like it. So, like if you don't have it. They're going to try, want to work somewhere else where they they do have it. Um, I don't know if employees look at it this way, but it is a measure of investing into your employee experience. There's a lot of press and discussion around the customer experience. Mm -hmm. uh, 
um, it's equally as important to, to pay attention to your employee experience. So back to your question, yeah, there's, there are many, many, many solutions. So it's commoditized. So what does that mean? Well, it comes down to there's going to be a price leveling that happens mm -hmm. automatically. You still should compare because ultimately um, you want to look at a, a supplier. The thing that differentiates, it's, it's the thing for any industry that's commoditized is customer service. Can you get mm -hmm. someone on the phone? Are they helping you with your dashboard? Do you want custom reports? Do you want to create like a custom um, initiative? Let's say you want to train, you have a drop, uh, a special grocery store, fruit, you know, we have uh, cotton candy grapes and they're there in the store for three weeks. Well, what are you going to do about it? And how do you mes message the teams about that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's a really, that's the way to do it and get everyone excited and maybe you do a co employee contest. So um, it's a must do, but as far as choosing someone, it's there's a, there are a lot of options. Yeah, because I mean, I, I like that about the, you know, getting everybody on board and getting everybody excited because um, a lot of times in retail today, I mean, obviously, you know, in certain places you see them understaffed, they can't get staffed to be honest, to begin with, but there's a and because of whatever because of that there's a little bit of a of a strange feeling sometimes um when you go into a store and they're understaffed and they're frazzled and all of that and that's the opposite of of what you want and there's probably some simple ways of alleviating at least some of that with technology well one of the biggest uh industry-wide and societal-wide um takeaways from the pandemic is we learned about patience Mm -hmm. everything changed and based in New York city, you know, you can zip in and zip out everything on a dime lines everywhere. We're and this is still right. Lines, 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 no people in stores waiting, waiting, waiting lines to check out lines for this lines for that. And we, it, it sort of is like a real real, like setting us back like a hundred years because mm -hmm. we're really used to, even basic stuff to get us in and out, right? Yeah. So we really learned patience. Now, then you have your question, which is what happens if like they've got like filler employees, people, you know, they need mm -hmm. bodies, but they're not really passionate. Um, I, I believe that's what you're asking. And yes. yeah, so uh, welcome to retail. That's That's been there for forever. Um, and good it, it great brands don't always have great employee mm -hmm. management skills or employee incentive skills um it always helps if the people working there are, are fans of the brand um or brands that you carry um you really want to have like again like if you think about building loyalty with your customers yeah. you're why are you not thinking about being lo bringing building loyalty from your employees yeah, that's a that's a really that is a really good point, um, because at the end of the day, I mean, your retail experience is it's partly the store and it's partly the human interaction that you have or how you how you perceive you're treated, how you feel when you go in there and how you feel when you leave. Um, and therefore, I think that's an excellent point. I'm not sure if. Um, and I know, my, you know, my wife did a, worked a lot of retail um, in her early days and stuff, and she did a little bit recently. And it just is, yeah, there's, it's warm bodies instead of like trying to find, you know, people who who really are passionate about the biz, you know, passionate about the store or whatever, but also also who like selling and helping people. So here's a a, a hack for mm -hmm. brands and retailers and physical stores to think about and employ to get people excited. So it is very, it's very tough to get people excited about, you know, the, the bigger company, but what they are very, what most, and, and a lot of salespeople are content creators. They're creators mm -hmm. of some way. Maybe yeah. they're working in a store, but they're working on their own little t-shirt line outside of the store. Um, we are dealing with a creator, I'm going to say economy, but let's we're dealing with a creator world. I mean, it's right. huge. So one of the things that um, a store can do, let's say 
a physical store, is to recognize and seek content creators, creators of all kinds, because one of the most powerful ways um, of selling right now is using user generated content. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've got the customers speaking on behalf, but it's really great when you have the employees speaking on behalf. So let's say you set up a system that your employees become your biggest marketers. They are speaking about your store, your brand, whatever it is, doing user generated content. Maybe it's EGC employee generated content. And at the same time, they share in the visibility. Mm. They own the visibility. You, the, we, the, the thing right now is to let people out from behind the curtain. And you, you know who's doing that um, is Disney. They're, they're very militaristic and hierarchical in their um, employee structure. You're there to do a job, et cetera. But they're focusing on a lot of their... Um, park employees and bringing them into their social media and talking about the number of years that they've worked there. They have some people working there 50 years. Um, so that's one small way on a very big scale. I would actually suggest anything. I would actually suggest that the employee be the creator and not just featured because it's still, mm -hmm. you want skin in the game. Yeah. And I think the other thing, too, about that is, um, you know, a lot of these, especially, you know, the younger people, some of them are just much better at it than anything you could do. Right. I mean, to be perfectly honest, um, and they know how to talk to their peers and they know what their peers. Um, I think that's a I think that's a great one. And I think that's one that it would be very simple, especially for small I mean, small businesses, small retailers or whatever to do this. And I think. As I said, after the pandemic, I think people crave that human connection, the authenticity, as you said, seeing behind the curtain, seeing people as people rather than just as, you know, robots in a store or robots online. Oh, let's not even talk about bots. But um, but I think that's a great opportunity is to harness is to harness that and to humanize your 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 store. There is a technology uh, that I've come across that is a SaaS, a technology service mm -hmm. provider that allows big, big companies, Danon and big, 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 to bake into their digital footprint, user generated content mm -hmm. and, and employ it in their, in their digital messaging without slowing down the site, without. So here's an example, which I found really fascinating is Enfamil, the baby formula, has user-generated content from a new mom posted, and it's her talking at three in the morning about having trouble using the mm -hmm. baby formula and getting through those early mom days. And all the other moms are like, oh my God, me too. Uh, and so that's a real emotional connection, okay? Mm -hmm. Brands, stores, environments are looking for, if you want loyalty, what is loyalty by definition? an emotional connection. Yeah. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And, and that's what, and I think that's where, uh, because pre pandemic, I think a lot of brands and, and this is goes for businesses of all kinds had started to leverage technology a little bit to kind of hide themselves, right. To get a little bit, try to push people down these paths so that they could never really interact <laughs> with human beings. And that for me has, that's, that's gone. Now people want, yes, they'll, they'll use technology as long as it's very efficient, but I mean, at some stage they do want to know that there's somebody behind there. I agree. Yeah. And um, and the other part of it, I think, is is that, as you just said, is, I mean, I love the user generated content because, I mean, when you're doing that, you are creating a community or your tribe, if you like. I know that's a that word people love to use. I feel like I'm way too old to be talking about tribes. But anyway, <laughs> um, but your community uh, around around that brand and and again, the, the humanization of it. And I think that's the that's the ironic thing is when we talk about digital transformation, we're we're talking about using technology to humanize. Oh, digital transformation can mean many, 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 mm -hmm. many things. Um, and 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 one of the other things it can mean is like 
having uh, multiple places to transact. So mm -hmm. digital transformation could be, okay, you have a store and you have a website. Okay, what else? We're at the point now where it's, uh, there are so many places to engage and transact. So um, that's really um, a mindset, right? Digital transformation is a mindset. So there are so many ser technology service providers where if you don't have that right mindset and that right path of transformation, it's just not a good fit. Um, and also, I think if retailers are mapping out their strategy and saying, okay, everything's changed. There's, there are offerings, technological offerings in nearly, well, every category we knew mm -hmm. and ones we didn't know. Wow, right. this is a solution looking for a problem. Okay, you make your list and you start with your, your strategy, your short-term immediate needs, your 18-month needs, and your three-year needs. And you're gathering information, executing against all of that. Um, for anyone to think digital transportation is you flip a switch and suddenly uh, you're using Clavio, that is not what we're talking about here, to be crystal clear. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because um, I think before you go on any digital transformation initiative, you need to really look at your processes and everything you do internally. And that's a bit sometimes people skip. So they just end up uh, digitizing or, or, or using technology to implement crappy processes. So you need to really, you know, at the end, start off with making sure you have the right processes, you have the right strategy and goals in mind. Very true. Yeah. Well, listen, Christine, this has been fantastic. A lot of Christine's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, me? Okay, great. I'd be happy to. Um, my name is Christine Russo. Um, and I have an agency. I primarily work with B2B. Um, it's a marketing and communications agency for B2B. I help technology companies make more sense of their solution so they can engage more and really help retailers. So I back into the system like, okay, you've got a great solution, but nobody knows what you do. Let me help you. I can tell you what people are thinking inside those conference rooms and what they're looking for. So I really want that. I really want the engagement. I want that transformation, but retailers are like, what are they talking about? So I help them. Um, and I host um, a What Just Happened podcast to help them tell their stories. And my specialty, um, it's a learn with me platform. And my specialty is to listen to a founder go on and on about their solution. And I'll be like, so what you're saying is, and I can get it out in four words. And it's like, okay, everyone, everyone can go home. We get it now. Um, so that's really a great service to C-suite and retailers, brands who are looking to learn about solutions um, in a very engaging way. Yeah, listen, fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Christine. And thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you, John.